we're going to go back to Soho for some nightlife. Um, sort of. Not, well, not yet we're not, unfortunately, of course, because everything's closed, including the Crow Bar, which is one of Soho's most loved venues, particularly if you're into rock and metal. Um, not my thing, but I'm really, really glad it's there. And I love going past it and seeing the people inside and hearing the music from blaring out. It's just very much part of that kind of Soho jigsaw. Um, and we're going to talk to somebody from the Crow Bar now, to Richard Thomas. Um, and we're going to be talking about the bar itself and also about their campaign to raise some money to make a film. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning, Robert. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. So first of all, how's the crowbar doing? Obviously, like everywhere else, it's closed and has been for quite some time. What's the, the current sort of state of play, would you say? The current state of play is that I have no premises in which to operate out of at the moment. Oh. Um, the uh, landlord hasn't been overly friendly through all of this, and um, I now find myself um, surrendering the lease oh. and uh, trying to raise money to open a new bar, not to make a film, but to open a oh, new bar. Sorry, that's that's something I've been given a bit of wrong information. Um, yes, we, the documentary was made. We released that last week. That was a couple of. Um, Customers who, who contact me and ask whether I'd um, do an interview for them, and, and the documentary grew out of that. But um, that's been done. No, the, the, the campaign is to raise money to reopen the crowbar at a different premises and hopefully to open both a bar and a, a live music venue. How long had the crowbar been there in that site? 19 years. Wow. I mean, it, we've lost so many, even before coronavirus and all of this kicked in we'd already lost a lot of soho's kind of treasured venues particularly the littler ones the smaller ones hadn't we yes unfortunately um you know the property developers are building knocking things down and building big shiny glass towers and yeah we've lost a lot not just bars but venues cafes restaurants everything that makes soho what it is <sighs> and are you thinking or looking to to re-establish in soho still Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Um, Soho is, is Soho. You're obviously a fan, so I don't have to sell you on the delights no, and joys of, of Soho. Um, <clears throat> but it's also important, I think, to be central, because you need to be accessible to the whole of London. And you stick yourself in North London, it makes it difficult for people who live south and, yep. and vice versa. So central London and Soho, definitely. And I'm hoping... I mean, a, a few things going on here. One is... As much as we all lament the places that we've lost in Soho, and, you know, there are far too many of them and we could all run through our favourites that have gone, I sort of did feel in the last couple of years that actually kind of, you know, some of the good things were holding on and, 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 and Soho had a bit of its kind of character back, particularly this summer, of course, when it was open for that period of time and out in the streets and, you know, and because it wasn't tourists here, it felt like it was ours again for a bit. Would you concur with that? Yes, I would, although I'd say Soho always belongs to the people. Um, the tourists come, the tourists go, but, um, you know, the hardcore of people who enjoy Soho, who eat there, who drink there, who party there, yeah. they're still around. And um, I found in the last five years a, a, a new vibrance in Soho. There's yeah. a whole new generation who come along who didn't remember the old place, didn't know it as anything other than a building site. But... They still loved it. They were still having the time of their lives. They were just enjoying their youth out, partying, socialising. And to them, they didn't remember the Storia and all those other places. So I found that they were not nostalgic for the old Soho. They were busy enjoying Soho here and now and having a great time. Brilliant, because that's exactly what it should be. Every generation should reinvent Soho for themselves, I think. Shouldn't well, very much so. And, it, you know, that's always been the case. I mean, one of my oldest customers is in his 70s and he was born there lived in Soho all his life and he said he's seen so many changes so many trends come and go but the one thing he always said was that the heart of Soho has never been lost no matter what the music fashion no matter what the generation that essence of Soho he says it goes on it's bigger than anything certainly bigger than property developers um, and which is why I personally feel that there's a lot of hope and a, and a big future for Soho. I yeah. don't think it's done by any stretch no, of the imagination. I'm so glad you said that, and I'm with you on that. And I'm particularly thinking that when we finally recover from all of this, and we shall, 
um, that there's got to be spaces and opportunities and places, hasn't there? Especially for people like yourself and the crowbar. Oh, I think so. I, I, I'm almost hoping that Soho will go back to the way it was in the late 60s and the early 70s. Yeah, I mean, where... I'm a li- that's a little early for me, but I remember it from sort of the mid-70s onwards. Yes, well, yeah, just that time period. What I'm talking about, really, is the time when it was owned by independents yeah. rather than a lot of chain bars and, and big com- corporations. When, um, you know, every every little venue was separately owned by somebody who did it for love rather than just a bottom line. So, how much are you trying to raise and where are you in that process? We're trying to raise 95000 We're just short of 50000 now. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm very, very pleased with that. It's, um, it's amazing. Um, you know, I'd like to thank everybody who's donated and everybody who's supported us because the support has been fantastic. Um... So we're halfway there to what we need. Um, this is not our only um, opportunity, though. There are investors, there are banks. There, you know, there's plenty of ways of raising money. So um, even if we don't make our target, I'm not overly worried about that. And what are there any kind of incentives for people? Inducements? How does it work? Yeah, it's effectively it's a raffle. Right. Um, there are various stages. The more you donate, the more raffles you go into, the more prizes you stand to win. Give us an example of some of the prizes. Um, well, the top prize, if you give a thousand pounds, is my last bottle of crowbar whiskey, number six six six. But you know, even if you give fifty quid, you stand to win uh, a mug, a belt buckle, a t-shirt, um, some patches, stickers. You know, a huge variety of things like that we've got to, to offer people. So nobody's donating for free. Everybody gets something. Brilliant. Any idea where in Soho you, you, you're looking? I mean, have you got any kind of leads? Um, not at the moment. I mean, I've got agents I'm in touch with, but um, unfortunately, the landlords are in an absolute shambles at the moment. I'm sure. They've been in denial for a year. Now the reality of everything, I think, is beginning to hit home on them. Um, and um, I don't see, really, the landlords being in a position for me to negotiate much with them for a, a few months. What's your time scale? do you reckon? Obviously, I mean, no-one can predict the future at the moment, but, but um, once you've found a space, how long, how long to make it nice and grotty? <laughs> well, I mean, I had hoped to be, you know, starting to look um, this spring, but um, unfortunately circumstances means that that's not going to happen. So I am hoping to be reopened sometime first half of next year. But obviously it, uh, it's all dependent on circumstances at the moment. And in terms of the bar, will it be very much like the, the crowbar of old? Yes. Different shape, possibly with better toilets. But other than that, um, you know, the first landlord I ever worked for said to me that four walls make a room, people make a bar, people create atmosphere. Yeah, atmos- absolutely the, tr- the case. So, yeah, so, you know, where it is exactly. I'd like something a similar size. I don't want to go from, you know, being a small pokey bar to sort of a huge, massive weather spoons. I think the size of the crowbar worked very well. Um, I think one of the delights of the crowbar was that you got a group hug, whether you want wanted one or not. And I, I think people quite enjoyed that human contact, that pr- up close and personal that a small bar gives you. I think that's why small bars have always been successful. Yeah, and, and for me, you know, even though rock is not my thing, Soho needs rock clubs, it needs jazz clubs, it needs reggae clubs. Do you know what I mean? It needs all of the music and all of the styles and all of the tribes and all of the kids. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, I, you know, I don't think Soho should just be about rock, as you say. It should be about absolutely everything. Um, and it always has been. Yeah. This is the thing. I mean, you know, back in the heydays of clubbing in the 90s, you know, whatever music style you were into, there was a nightclub to cater for you. And um, I think it, it's, that, it's that diversity that makes Soho so wonderful. If people want to get involved, how do they go about doing so, Richard? Um, if people want to donate, then they can go to the Crowdfunder site, which is um, currently www.crowdfunder.co.uk slash crowbar. Um, or feel free to just give us a shout on Facebook or any social media. I just love to hear from people out there. It's good to know that I'm not alone in this fight. Um, we live in a very isolated world at the moment where we don't get to chat. I mean, one of the great ironies is if I needed to raise this money and I still had the crowbar, it'd be very easy because I could talk to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, you know, everybody's isolated. But, you know, feel free, get in touch on Facebook. Anybody, any ideas, just encouragement, support. I just love to hear from people. 
brilliant. I mean, I've already made contributions towards the French house, towards the Spanish bars, towards... And it's really important that we keep all of those places going. And, and, and here, I'll raise a glass to the new Crowbar. Crowbar 2. The Crowbar rides again. Richard Thomas, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Robert. Take care. Bye-bye.